we can finally start creating panels of the car. The first panel we're going to create is the front hood. To get started, we're going to take this guide mesh here. Before we do anything else, I want to let you guys know that I went ahead and renamed each of the guide mesh to their respective ones. So this is the body guide mesh. The one we have up here is the roof guide mesh. And the one at the back is the trunk guide mesh. So you can rename yours accordingly. Now let's take this mesh here, which is the body guide mesh. Now I'm going to shift and D this to duplicate it. I want to move this body guide mesh to the vehicle collection we have over here. Now if you take each of these guide mesh we have over here, let me just disable the vehicle collection. If you take each of these guide mesh and you go over into the modifier tab, I increased each of them to a level 4. You don't want to keep it down on a level 2. The reason for that is if you keep it at the same level as your panel, your panel might have some artifacts going on in it. So to better define the surface, you want the subdivision levels of the guide mesh to be higher or twice as high than the uh, panel you're creating out of it. So each of these guide meshes are a level 4. Let's go ahead and disable the guide meshes and let's enable the vehicle. Now I'm going to take this duplicated guide mesh here and let's drop it down to a level 2. We're going to be creating this hood over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to need all these vertices here. The ones on the left, but the ones on the right, what they're going to need. So what I can do is I can take these vertices and then align them on the cut line. Now over here, I think we're going to have to fix things a bit. So I'm going to slide this here and then move it up in a Z maybe a bit. And let's zoom into this area and see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to slide it forward just a bit more. Now I'm going to take this and then that one, I'm going to hit J to join it. Let me slide this forward just a little bit. Now what we can do is to take everything else down here, or you could just take these edges here, all the way to about here, and delete the vertices. We can go up here and delete this vertex, and delete all of these ones we have over here as well. Now let's take everything else. Oh, hold on. Yeah, we have an edge over here. So let's delete that edge. Now we can take everything else and delete the vertices or edges or whatever that is. So we're going to be working with the rest of the vertices we have over here. And to start things off, I think we move this vertices a bit, which means the guide mesh is not going to work well in this area unless we fix it. So I'm going to bring back the guide mesh and then let's take that guide mesh. You can see we have an overlap going on and that's uh, the panel overlapping beyond the bounds that it is supposed to be. If we went ahead and added a shrink wrap to this, it will cause some problems to the area. The way we can fix this is to just go into edit mode and we can take these vertices here and then slide them back to about somewhere here. And I'm going to take this one as well and move it in a Y just so it is covering it as much as possible. Just to be safe, what you can do is to take all of the edges over here from here to there. I want to slide it back a bit and press C and slide it beyond to about somewhere here just so we know it is completely covering everything so if I take the the panel here you can see it's being covered completely now let me go into wireframe here let's disable the guide mesh and I'm going to take this piece we have over here I'm going to slide it up to about somewhere here I'm going to slide this one down a bit to about here hold on slide it down a bit to about here and we should keep it somewhere around there. Maybe let's slide it down a bit more, so to about somewhere here, like so. Let me take all of the vertices we have over here, and I'm going to slide it back a bit to about somewhere here. Let me slide this one back a bit as well. I'm going to take all of these as well. I'm going to press G twice and then press E, and then slide it back to about somewhere here, so it is aligned with the image edge we have over here. Now the next thing we can do if I should get out of camera view here is to add in the shrink wrap modifier. So I'm going to add in a shrink wrap modifier and I'm going to add in the target as the body guide mesh. And you can see that fixed the surface in this area a bit because if you took a look at my first video, I explained why the, uh, the guide mesh is very important for uh, panel creation and to keep reflection flow very nice and beautiful. So for that, that is what the shrink wrap modifier will be doing for us. Now let's get back into edit mode. Now we're going to have to support this edge we have over here a bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press Ctrl and R in this area and we don't have to worry about it 
demolishing the surface here because we have a shrink wrap modifier going on. So no matter how much we move this vertex, as long as it's in the right position, it shouldn't cause any uh, issues with the surface. I'm just going to add one in here, and slide it to about somewhere here, and I'm going to add one up here as well and keep it in the middle. And let's get into the camera view. Okay, I think it automatically defines that curve very nicely for us. Except for this area right here. I'm just going to take this and then let's slide it out a bit to about somewhere here. Like that. And let me take this one and slide that out a bit as well. I'm just going to move it down or up in the Z maybe. Let me take this and move it up in the Z just a little bit. Just so it is following it as close as possible. I need to mention to you guys that uh, if you should add in your subdivision surface and everything else. And your edges here. Let me enable this one as well. I'm not following these edges as close as possible. Say for example, it seems to be following in all of the images, but over here it doesn't seem to be following. Say it's something like this. Then the issue is from your guide mesh. Basically what that means is you are going to have to go back to your guide mesh. For example, I bring the guide mesh back here. You're going to have to tweak things in this area a bit more. Because that means a vertex or an edge is not in the right position. For example, like this. And you can see that would cause this to kind of deform a bit. So you're going to have to fix things in that area and then uh, try to get things correct on the panel as well. But I assure you that uh, if it's not so major, and what I mean by so major is if it's something uh, as small as a displacement like this, you should be fine. It shouldn't be an issue. It would be hardly noticeable. So if you have something like this displacing from the edge, of one image but it seems to be aligning on the rest you can get away with that without any issues but i think on my end here we did a pretty good job and i think everything is following as close as possible you can see here it doesn't follow too closely but that's good enough in here as well but that is absolutely good enough now the next thing we're going to do is to adding supporting edge loops to this uh, mesh and then we can go ahead and then solidify the panel and then we can call this piece done First things first, I'm going to press Ctrl and R through the side. Now I'm going to press E to align it with the right side and move it closely like so. Maybe even more closer to about somewhere here. Now let me do the same thing down here. So Ctrl and R, press E and then F. Now let's move it to about somewhere here. Now let's make our way to this side. And I think for this side I'm going to use the knife tool. So I'm going to press K and then knife this from here all the way to there. I want to take this and merge it to the last one here, like so. Now, I think we already have a supporting edge loop here, so we don't need another one. Now that we have all that done, we can go ahead and then add in a solidify modifier. But before we add in a solidify modifier, a good practice will be to duplicate your shrink wrap modifier and then apply them. This is not recommended in all cases, because sometimes when you go ahead and apply the shrink wrap modifier, you tend to lose edges like these ones. But in the case that this edge is also uh, visible in the guide mesh itself, then it won't be a problem to apply the shrink wrap modifier here. And the reason we're applying or duplicating the shrink wrap modifier and applying it is when we go ahead and then uh, add in a solidify modifier, everything should look nice and even. If, for example, I take this and then I move it up like this, and we don't apply the shrink wrap modifier, and I add in a solidify modifier now, and let's say uh, I'm going to increase the size. And if I should apply the uh, the solidify modifier, and I should go in here. If you take a look at this area, let me just go into full screen. You can see we did get the solidify modifier going on, but you can see the space between these and these from the surface here is very tiny. So from the surface to the side is very small. But if you make your way up here, where the uh, the position of the vertices were corrected, you can see that the space between these top vertices and the bottom one is quite huge in the way we want it to look. And this is uniform all across, except for this one, which, you know, displaced a bit and we didn't apply the shrink wrap modifier and hence, you know, caused this problem. I hope that makes sense. So let's undo this and go back to where we initially were. So for that reason, we're gonna duplicate the shrink wrap modifier and then we're gonna apply it like that. Now we can go ahead and then add in a solidify modifier. To have the solidify work properly, we're going to apply the uh, the scale of the panel we have over here. 
So we're going to hit Control A and then apply the scale. So now that we've applied the scale, we can go ahead and then increase the thickness of this mesh we have over here. And I think I'm going to go with something like a 0 0.05. Now we're going to enable even thickness and then we're going to enable only rim. Now what we're going to do is to duplicate this solidify modifier and we're going to apply the one at the bottom and then disable this one for now. Let's go into full screen here and let's go into edit mode. Now before we do anything else, let's take all of these vertices here, right? Now you can see these vertices are also being shrink wrapped onto the guard mesh surface we have over here. That is why we don't have any mesh surface in this area. So to fix this, if you watch the, uh, the very first video, we're going to have to define things with a vertex group. So we tell the shrink wrap modifier not to include these vertices here when shrink wrapping the uh, panel. So I'm going to get out of full screen and let's go over into the object data properties here and let's add in a new group. I want to press Ctrl and I to invert the selection. And then we're going to assign these vertices selected here to this group we have over here. You can rename it to whatever you want to call it. Say something like surface. I want to go back to the guide mesh, uh, to the modifier panel here. And then down to our shrink wrap modifier, where it says vertex group, we're going to add in that vertex group like this. And you can see the shrink wrap modifier is now ignoring the uh, solidify vertices we added in. Now let's go back into full screen and then we can try and then fix things on this panel or the guide mesh, uh, the solidify that we added in. And then we can take things from there. So I'm going to slide this down to about here and then slide it down to about somewhere here. I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's go around and see if we find any issues and then fix them. Okay, everything seems to be looking good. The final thing we can do, if you take a look here, we have an issue over here. And that's because the solidify modifier added in faces in the middle here. And we don't want that. So we can just select all of the vertices here. I'm just going to press X and delete the faces. And that should fix it. Now let's get out of uh, full screen. And then uh, let's go ahead and enable the second solidify modifier. And that should add in an extra surface on the inside here, if you take a look. Now this second one, we don't want it to be as thick or as big as the first one. So we're going to reduce the thickness to something like 0 0.025. And that should be good. Now we're going to apply that one. And then let's make sure it is also not added to the uh, mesh surface or the vertex group surface here. Automatically, it shouldn't be added because the one behind it or the one before it is not added to it. But just to be sure, you can just click on remove just so it is not added to it. Now let's go back into full screen. And let's fix any issues we see with this solidify. So I'm going to slide this to about here and then slide it up. And I'm going to do the same thing here and then slide it in. Just like before, you can see over here, it added in uh, extra surfaces that we don't need. So I'm going to select all of those vertices. I want to press X and delete the faces. Now what we can do now is to take these two and press G and X so we can merge it in the center like that. Now the final thing we're going to do is to press Ctrl and R through here to add in a single loop cut. And then we're going to press Alt and S to shrink out this loop cut like so. And I want to click on remove here to remove it from the surface vertex group we have over here. So it's not being shrink wrapped onto the surface. All right, we're going to round it off more by pressing Alt and S and shrinking it out just a bit more like that. And that should be looking about good. Once we add in the uh, the fender panel, we can see or we can uh, tell if we should uh, round it off more or reduce it. I think I'm going to round it off a bit more like so. Okay. All right, so I'm going to get out of full screen and I'm going to rename this to Hood. 